So this is a piece of powder coated 6061 aluminum. I did the powder coat. It's probably about five thousandths of an inch thick. It's not real thick. It's a super high gloss black. I wasn't real happy with the uh, powder coat finish that I chose and that's just what the powder was. Kind of looks like paint but it's not. It is powder coat. You can kind of see how the powder didn't get all the way into the edges of that counter bore. So what I'm going to do is two things. I kind of read about this before I did it so hopefully the settings will come out decently well. You can do two things with powder coat. You can either remove the powder coat and mark the underlying aluminum and that's what's underneath this or you can just burn the powder coat and sort of mark that finish and I've never done this so this will be the first time. So this one on the left is going to be our intense mark and that should burn through the powder coat. So I'm guessing on the settings and that's going to use our pen zero and then the one on the right is going to be the one where we try just to mark the powder coat finish so we've upped the frequency, reduced the power and upped the speed quite a bit. So two separate marks that are about 20 millimeters tall each and let's give it a shot. And you can see I changed my setup from the old little tiny laptop to a full 27 inch screen with a computer behind it just because I kind of prefer this if you ever have to do any vector work or anything like that. If you happen to see the laptop in any of my other videos. So I've already set the focal length. That's about where it's going to be. And we're just going to mark the settings right on this because it's a little bit easier than figuring out what they were after the fact. So let's give it a shot. Well, definitely visible, and we know from our aluminum marking that the slower you go, if it's something over 40% power and less than, what was it? I think it was about 40% power and less than 400 millimeters per second, you're going to get kind of a charcoal mark in aluminum. I think we got through the powder coat there. Definitely feel it. It looks like it is kind of whitish, so I'm thinking we marked the aluminum. It's a clear mark. Again, this whole thing is about 20 millimeters tall. Well, right next to it, let's do the other mark. So this is going to be faster, 1,000 millimeters per second, 30% power. I think we're not going to get through the powder coat. Let's see if I can fit it all on there. Oh, way over here. I think that'll fit. So we're not changing the hatch. We're not changing the angle. Let's do it. I think we had an outline there at the end. That's what the more intense marking was. So significantly more yellow. All right, we need to try a more intense one. I'm going to switch our first mark. I think I'm going to change it to, let's leave it at 200 millimeters per second, but let's use 90% power and let's change the hatch to something like 0.02 millimeters. So let me make sure those settings coincide with what I'm writing. So 290, 20.02, and that is pen zero. 290, 20.02. See if we can fit that here. Might be a little bit in the counter bore. All right, let's do it. definitely see the burnt area. 
And that got quite a bit more gray, so I think we're definitely in the aluminum now. This is a little more white, that's a little more yellow, and that's seemingly more gray. Definitely easy to mark though. Looks like you almost can't go wrong with this stuff, and it's always a destructive mark, so it's not like anything is at risk of rubbing off. So in that small amount of marking, I would say the nicest, clearest mark I got was probably this one. And those are the settings I used. So I guess it's a matter of personal preference, but what I'm gonna do now is mark this tooth straightener that I made quite a while ago, and it's got a silver vein powder coat finish. I don't know if it's gonna be different because this definitely has more texture to it than the gloss black powder coat did. So the settings I'm gonna use are these on the bottom right. 1000, 30%, 40 kilohertz, and 0.05 hatch spacing with those two angles. All right, so I've adjusted this position. I'm gonna put a mark. It's gonna be the model number of TS05 right on the front left corner here on the top. And I've adjusted my height quite a bit higher. And we're gonna mark that right there. I reapplied the hatch when I resized it to 20 millimeters tall. And our pen settings are the exact same ones that I used for the darker mark. It's gonna be 1030 and 40 kilohertz. And our hatch spacing is 0.05. Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Okay, 0.05, we're enabling the contour, we're only doing one hatch, and our angle is gonna be 45 with the cross hatch. So, let's say okay, we should be set at the right focal height. Light it up to make sure, ooh, that's big, that's too big. Let's shrink that quite a bit. And since I resized it, I'm gonna click on the H and reapply the hatch, and let's mark. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see it. It was quick, but it didn't get through it. So it's a little bit different when you're looking at it on a textured powder coat. So I don't think we got through the powder coat. And it was hard to tell that we couldn't get through it, but that didn't get through, and that's probably why it's still yellowish. So I'm going to up the power and do the exact same thing and go right over it. So instead of 30, I'm gonna go back to this 70. Well, that definitely got through the powder coat, and that looks pretty good. Well, it's a lot easier to see the difference between a surface mark and something that actually destroys the powder coat. So power is key, I suppose. Speed's gotta be a little bit slower. The clarity of the mark looked good on the previous marking where we were only using 30% power, but apparently we weren't getting through the powder coat. Or this is easier to mark than this, maybe because of the texture. Let's do one more on the inside just with that mark without repeating over a mark. So this will be the same settings. It'll be 70% power and 20 kilohertz and 200 millimeters per second. So here we go. That looks clear. So I guess those are the settings you need if you want to blast through it. If you don't want to blast through it and you want to just, just want to do a surface mark, you can cut the power in half and probably increase your speed by twice as much. Or five times as much, I suppose. Looks good, though.